Good morning, everyone. Boketov. Good morning. Can you hear me? Our class about uh, the daily blessing of seeing life, having a vision, not just seeing life physically, but also looking a little bit deeper every day. And the Siddur, we say, good morning. Good, morning, good morning blessings. And one of the blessings is, we, we say, blessed are you, God, King of the universe, Pokeh Ivim, he who uh, heals the blind, he who uh, gives vision to, the, to those that are blind. So the simple meaning of the blessing is in the morning, you wake up, your, your eyes are closed, all night long, you're not seeing, so you're a little bit like on the blind side. And then you wake up in the morning, you say, Baruch Hashem, Baruch Atah, the Shem, Malakein, Melechalom, Pokeach, Ivrim. He who gives vision to Ivrim, to those that, are, that, that can't see. Yeah. It's an important bracha. But we spoke last week, we start, touched on it, and we said that there is the simple meaning of the blessing. And just like the first blessing that we spoke last week about the rooster, that we thank God for giving the rooster the understanding to know the difference between day and night. We said that blessing is also a blessing for ourselves to know the difference between good and bad, between morally right things and making good decisions in life. The second blessing is, is, is connected to it on a deeper level. We are thanking Hashem and we're giving Him a blessing. We're saying, Hashem, please give us the ability to see things and we say see things it's interesting this week's portion Torah portion and what's the name of this week's Pasha it's Pasha Re'e Re'e look to see not just looking but seeing seeing things on a deeper level you know one of the prohibitions that we read about in the Shema it says you shall not look after your heart and after your eyes do not stray after them. Veloy sasuru. Veloy sasuru. Veloy in the modern Hebrew, Velo tatu. Acharei levavchem, acharei anechem. Not to be superficial people. Something the Torah really cares a lot about. The Torah doesn't want us to be superficials. Okay? Not to be official, not to be superficial. Superficial people is the worst. People that look at other people externally and they don't judge them for the inside. This is the biggest problem we have in humanity today. When we judge people by social media, we judge them by the news, we judge them by the external package that God gave them. And we don't give them even a chance to prove themselves who they are on the inside, right? First thing you have to do is. Ask Hashem to open your eyes, give you self vision, vision, seeing the world, seeing the world, the universe, the right, right thing, and how we view other people, how we view what's going on. It's, uh, it's, this is it's one of the biggest problems of the world of the generation, is that we are we are superficial people, externals. Marriages break up. People are too much into externalities. Everybody, everybody today, it's all how you present yourself. <laughs> it's how you look. You know, it's a, lot of, a lot of marriages, unfortunately, break up. But people are judging others by the external qualities. As King Solomon says, Shekrachen vehevel hayoyfi. Charm is deceitful, and beauty is a lie. Isha yiras Hashem, he is of God-fearing woman. This is what should be judged by. God was God-fearing woman. Mean? It doesn't mean that she sits and fears in her. You know, sits a whole day and she's fearing God. Boo, boo, boo. God-fearing is a deeper thing. A God-fearing person is a person that's ethical, that's moral, that's 
strong inner qualities, my friends. That's what we're looking for. That should be praised. So we have to make like a paradigm shift in our life to look at things in a different, different way. And that's what we ask Hashem every morning. Hashem, don't let us be fooled by the externals of this world. Give us, give us the ability to, to look beyond the externals and to see the world. You know, God himself is very hidden in this world. It's very easy to reject the God in this world. Because we don't see, we don't see Hashem, right? Hashem is hidden. As the psalmists say, oh, in at the kel mistater, you are God, a hidden God. And God does a very good job of playing hide and seek. You know? He hides himself very well. He hides himself to the point that we have a lot of people who reject the notion of a God. But we all know deep down inside there is a God. It's in our soul. It's in who we are. And it's if we look beyond the surface, then we know Hashem. We can see Hashem. We find Hashem. But in the superficial world, that's a God. Who sees the God? You see no God. But my friends, every day you wake up, you walk outside, you look at this nature. You see a nice, beautiful, sunny day. You go outside, you look at the plants and the birds and multifaceted world, beautiful colors. It's like a... <laughs> Where does all that come from? Not Hashem. But for that, you need to look a little bit deeper. Look at all the birds. And every, there's no two people alike in the world. There's no two birds alike. There's, Every creature is different. You look outside, you see Marabu Masecha Hashem, how multi diverse is your creations of God. Magodlu Masecha Hashem, how great are your creations. So you look a little deeper to the surface, you, see you find Hashem. But for that, you need to have good vision. You need you need, I say, you need spakulin, you need the glasses, you need to put on glasses, not sunglasses, sunglasses blocks everything out, blocks, blocks yourself out, but to see, to have good, good, good vision, get yourself 20-20 vision, that's the bracha we're reading today, Just say it in the siddur, you have a siddur, it's on page six, yeah, so you're going to know, you understand, you say this bracha, Obviously, we're thanking God for giving vision to uh, to the blind. I saw yesterday a video clip of a little girl where the doctors were able to give her vision for the first time. A little girl, maybe like a one or two year old kid, and and they gave her like a pair of glasses. And with that glasses, she was able to see for the first time. They did an operation, and then they gave her the glasses after the operation. Gave the ability to see her mother for the first time, of mother and father. Can you imagine a kid never saw mother and father the day she was born? You have to see that the, the smile of the young girl, <laughs> little girl, one or two year old girl. She's but she's like, wow, this is vision. I get to see my mother, my father. <laughs> you can see the kid like smiling, it's so cute. So special. And each and every one of us every day have to ask Hashem to give us to give us the vision. And this vision comes in many ways. But just look at the brachet. Brachet on page six. It's the second blessing on the page. Bless you, Lord God, King of the universe. Who opens the eyes of the, of the blind. So each and every one of us are a little bit, every day we're a little bit blind to certain things, right? And we ask Hashem to give us vision. Blind can also mean being judgmental of other people. Many of us are judgmental. We're always jumping to conclusions about people. Never judge a person until you're in their shoes, until you're in their circumstance. People are fast, right away, call a judgment without knowing all the facts, but I'm hearing both sides of the story. That's also a blindness, blindness to the truth. 
So we're asking Hashem to open our eyes to be able to see, see, see the truth. Story once the Baal Shem Tov. Someone came to the rabbi and the Baal Shem Tov and asked him, can you tell me the, 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 the secret of reincarnation? How does reincarnation work? So Baal Shem Tov says, you want to know reincarnation? Reincarnation is the concept that sometimes souls come back to complete something in this world. He says, you want to understand? I'll show you. And Baal Shem Tov tells, tells this guy, I want you to go to this, this park and sit down on the park bench and stay there a whole day and observe what goes on. So he goes to the park bench, the Baal Shem Tov sends him to exact, exact location, he sits down there. And he sees a fellow coming there, puts a little blanket down, makes a little picnic. And uh, he leaves. And the fellow gives a look. And he sees that he left his wallet behind on the floor. A wad of cash. Then uh, he goes away. A second guy comes over. And he sits down over there, also makes a picnic. And he gives a look and he sees, uh, wow, a wad of cash. And he picks up the money. And then the first guy comes back. And sorry, then a third guy comes. So a third guy comes. A third guy comes and he sits down at the same place. This guy is watching it the whole time, this whole story, right? So first guy comes, leave the cash. Second guy comes, takes the cash. And then the third guy comes and sits down. The first guy comes back and he sees the third guy sitting there. He says, Where's my money? I left my cash here, my wallet. He says, I don't, I don't have it. Next thing you know, the first guy is beating the, the third guy, beating him up. And he runs away. They all run away. Story ends. He comes back to Baal Shem Tov. And he asks Baal Shem Tov, what, what, what are you showing me? It's a crazy story. One guy leaves the money. Another guy picks it up. A third guy comes and gets beaten up. What's this all about? He says, you asked me to explain you reincarnation. So I'm explaining it to you. He says, three people you saw. Many, many years ago, about a few hundred years ago, there was uh, two people that came to the rabbi's office. One accused the other of uh, some partners. They were fighting over a couple hundred dollars. And uh, the rabbi was about to say the verdict, who because he heard all the facts. He was about to give the right guy the money. Suddenly, one of the guys calls the rabbi out and outside and slips him a $20 bill. <laughs> and the rabbi made the verdict in favor of that guy, even though he was, he was, he was really the loser. But he changed the whole thing and gave it to the wrong guy. Uh, corrupt rabbis never happens in the history of the world, but <laughs> this guy was a little corrupt. So Bashem says, all those three souls had to come back down to the world again to finish up what they had. The guy that wrongly took the money, the crook in the, in the story, wrongly took, got the, the word of the few hundred dollars. Right? He had to lose the money. So he lost his, his wallet. He had to lose the money because he, he, he had this money he's taken wrongly. The second guy that came to found the money and went away with it, that's the guy who a few hundred years earlier lost the money in the court case. Right? So Hashem gave him back the money. And the third guy who got beaten up, you know who he was? He was the rabbi. <laughs> he came he got beaten up. That was the rabbi because he deserved to get beaten up. <laughs> so that's the Baal Shem story. So 
everything. Now, so what, the reason why I'm telling you this story is if you, that guy was sitting there watching this whole story unfold, he had no idea. One guy's losing money, another guy's finding money, another guy's being accused wrongly. We know nothing. You have to know the story behind the story. There's always a story behind the story. So that's the story of reincarnation. So we ask Hashem to, to give us a little bit. Of, Hashem to gave the fellow, he gave him a little bit of a vision. And then everything made sense. But we look, we see a lot of stories. It's, it doesn't make sense. It's once a little child was sitting with the Bobby, and Bobby was making a beautiful tapestry. And the child, the grandchild was looking at the, the, the grandmother and saying, what's going on over here? All I see is a bunch of strings coming out of your tapestry this way. Uh, the grandmother laughs. She turns the tapestry around so the, so the grandson can see it. And she says, here's a beautiful picture. You were looking at the back. At the back, all you see is little strings and pieces that make no sense. You see the picture, everything makes sense. Same thing is with us. A lot of things in life we don't understand. So we ask Hashem to give us the wisdom to be able to understand things. Time to time, we get a little bit of a picture. Hashem gives us a little bit of a of a, of a, uh, when the world to come, when we come, when Mashiach comes, or when we come up to heaven, over there we'll have a better understanding. But here in this world, we're asking Hashem also to give us the understanding, like the Baal Shem Tov gave that guy understanding. There's, an, there's another famous story of re, also reincarnation with the Baal Shem Tov about a couple that came to the Baal Shem Tov, Baal Shem Tov big rabbi, famous rabbi, Rabbi Israel, Israel Baal Shem Tov. Famous rabbi said they came to a couple came to him and they said, Rabbi, they started crying to Rabbi Balshem. So they said they're already married for 10 years, they haven't had a child. Please, all the doctors already wrote her off. She said, They said, the mother, the wife can't have children, it's impossible. So please, Rabbi, help us. We want to have, be parents. Balshem says, Look, I'll try my best for you. He davened and he davened, prayed for them. And Baruch Hashem, miraculously, nine months later, they had a child. But unfortunately, five years later, the child dies. They come back to the Baal Shem Tov. They say, Rabbi, you gave us a little bit of joy for a little while, but it's terrible, tragic. We started loving this child so much, and then the child dies on us. It's the most tragic possible to lose a child. Rabbi, what's going on? Rabbi says, oh, well, let me explain to you. I guess the Baal Shem knew a lot of things. I'm going to tell you another story. Everybody tells a story in the story. The story goes back a few hundred years earlier. When the Jews were somewhere in one of the, one of the shtetls. There was a, even earlier, some king and a, and a, and a queen. And... Uh, they were childless as well. And of course, when, when people don't have something or they need something, they always come to the Jews. So the queen and the king, they came to the Jews and they said, Jews, our Jews, our subjects, you need to pray for us to have a child. And if you don't, we're going to kill all the Jews that in the town, or something like that. So the, the Jews, they started to pray. Why were they, why were they davening? They were davening. And something went up in heaven, a commotion. Such strong prayers were coming to the heavens. That there was a soul in the heavens, a Jewish soul. It came to for Hashem and said, you know, there's such strong prayers coming up here to the heavens. I'm ready to volunteer to be a child for, the, for that king and queen. Uh, this was a Jewish soul. Please save the Jewish people. They're going to be all killed out. Hashem, please, I'm ready to go. So Hashem says, okay, you can go. And he sent down this Jewish soul to the king and the queen. And they had this baby, and then they stopped persecuting the Jews, and everybody lived happily ever after, but not yet. The story is not over. A few years later, Child grows up in the house of the king and the queen. Gentile king and queen, but you know, had life. A little wicked. The child had a life, you know. 
But the child was a special soul, as you, as you can see. A selfless soul, a beautiful soul that loved, loved Hashem and loved. So this child one day comes to the parents and says, I want to learn, I want to learn more. Something seriously, right? So they found one of the finest teachers that possibly a person can have in those days. And the teacher comes to them, he's interviewed, and they love this teacher, a brilliant teacher for the, for the prince. But the teacher tells them, he says, I'm going to teach this your son every day, but I need a room beside the, 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 the school. And every day I'm going to go for about an hour into that room, and I'm going to lock the door, and nobody's allowed to bother me for that hour. Oh, it can increase it. No problem. Started teaching the young man, young boy, young boy for a couple of years. 10 years, and every day the, the teacher used to go into that room in the morning, something for about an hour, and do something. Nobody knew what. One day the, the boy was curious, found a way to break into the room, and he gives a look and he sees the teacher is wearing a talus and tefillin. <laughs> so, a Jewish teacher. Right? So every day he used to go and they had to daven, the daven shach. This is something. Yeah? So, the, the kid asks the teacher, What's this? There's already a, maybe a young teen. He asks, what's this? You never told me about this. He says, well, I never wanted to tell you. A little dangerous. I'm Jewish. And, and, and I meditate every day for an hour with my talus, my tefillin. So the young man says, you're my teacher. Everything I know is from you. I want to be exactly like you. How can I become Jewish? How can I be just like this? So eventually, this teacher tells the parents that they want, he wants to, they want to go on a road trip with the students somewhere out of, out of the country. And they went on a road trip out of the country and he went to a Jewish community somewhere very far away and converted and became Jewish. And that was the end of that story. And then he became a, a, a famous Jewish guy, uh, this, this, this prince. But after he died, he came back to heaven. When he came back to heaven, they were going to send him to heaven, you know, because he's such a great soul. But they said to him, now, you know what? You have you were nursing for a few years from, from a woman who was who was evil, who was a wicked queen, and that was absorbed by you for those years. So we need to do something to reverse it. So we're going to send you back down to earth. And that's what the Baal Shem Tov told these parents. He said, this was the soul we brought back down because this soul had to be nursed by a Jewish mother of a refined woman to counter those few years of, of bad influence that received from the, in the previous life. And that's why this soul had to come down again for a couple of years and then go back up to her. So the parents heard that and they were to some degree comforted. But the main point is, not everything we see or hear or understand is, is like we see it, right? It's very, very deep things that are happening around us that's beyond the surface. When a Chos and a Kala get married, first thing they do, a part of the, ch the chuppah ceremony, before they even go to the chuppah, Chos comes into the bride's room, and what does he do? He takes a veil and he places it over her face. He doesn't unveil her. You think that you're going to marry a woman. You should unveil her. No, no, no. He doesn't unveil her. He veils her. And the unveiling is another ceremony, another part of life. But here we have a veiling ceremony. That's the bad decking. It's covering the bride. Why? So I always explain to the Chastan Kala. Besides, for the reason that we know the story that Jacob was 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 was, was fooled by his father-in-law, who the bride would be, so he has to go see who, who who he's marrying. But why? But okay, so but why cover her up? If that's the reason, just look at her, see who she is. But place to teach us a most important thing: that never judge a book by its cover. Always look deeper, and the marriage especially, you need to look. Sometimes for some people, you have to look very deep. Some people, you have to look deeper and deeper until you find the good. But the message to every bride and groom is that the person that you're marrying now, 
is not necessarily the real person. The real person is something that's deeper down inside. Now many say that's that's why it was Leah and Rachel. Rachel was Yaakov's sweetheart. He, he worked for her for seven years, felt like a couple of minutes. He loved her. He fell in love with her. She was so beautiful. Rachel, she was like a little sheep. It's the name Rachel. Princess Leia was crying. She had, she had goofy eyes. She, had, she wasn't so pretty. So he got Leia instead of Rachel. So that's, as some say, that's the explanation is that every wife has a Rachel side to her. Rachel is the beautiful side. And Leia is the partner. Leia is the one who has the children. Leia is the one that works hard. Leia is, is the, 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 the one that you're not enraptured with, but after many years you fall in love with. It's a different kind of a thing. It's, it's, it's deeper and deeper, digging into deeper the person. You know? An older couple sometimes. Remember once Goldie and I, when we were dating, we saw this older couple dancing on top of the Twin Towers. I don't know if any of you remember the Twin Towers. Yeah, that was some place. Yeah, so we used to date over there, the top of the Twin Towers. So it's no more our, our, our favorite place. I remember once up there, this place called the Windows of the World. We were able to see the whole Manhattan. Beautiful. And it goes, it was like a 360 degree you know, thing to return. And they always had somebody playing the piano, the piano man or something playing over there, some music. And when we were there, an so older couple, like maybe like in the 90s, they, they got up and they started dancing. And we were looking at them, we were saying, you know, we were just dating. We said, Halavai, we should have that kind of love in, in, in 50, 60, 70 years from now. The way they're looking each other in the eyes, you know, something beautiful. She was old, and, you know, her face was baggy and body was barely going, and he was also old. And, but they were looking at each other like, like young people. Look beyond the surface. That's, that's the key. It's the key to a good marriage. To, to have a veiling ceremony because you're, what you're saying is, I'm not marrying the outside. I am marrying totally the inside. I am in love with your inside. That's the secret to a good marriage. That's the secret to life. That's the secret to, to looking at the world and seeing Hashem. Bracha, we ask Hashem, even open up our eyes. Let's not be judgmental of other human beings. We always have a tendency of, of judging other people. We have to look deeper down into people also. Because sometimes people are externally, they're, they're rough. In Hebrew, they have a sabra. You know, the sabra is... A, they're prickly on the outside, but soft on the inside. A lot of people are like that. But when you get to know them, they're beautiful people. Everybody has something good about them. You just need to look a little deeper. So my friends, that's the brachy we learned today. We ask God, open up our eyes. And next week, we're going to look at the next bracha, which is Mati Rasurim, who releases the bound. It's all other explanation. We'll hear about next week in this show. So uh, I hope you guys enjoy the Shia. Anybody have any questions on what we said? Rabaisa, huh? Thank you, Rabbi. You're welcome. You're welcome. Huh? Please, God, we should all have a good visionary week and yes. see things properly and deeply, profoundly, to have a profound and deeper perspective on life. That will bring us much, much happiness. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you for explaining the first one between night and day, you know, between right and wrong. Yeah, yeah, the yeah. Explanation, you would never know. That's the deeper meaning, really. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's why we give the classes here. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Rabbi. Thank you. Thank you. All the best. Shavuot. So many thanks. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom, everyone. Shabbat shalom.